and Jared Bell from USA Today. Um, I'm wondering if you can shed some insight on the chemistry and your comfort level in, in how it was established during your time here. Was there a particular period when it really took off and you felt like it was really fitting? And, and the second part of that question was, would be, how was the time that you missed with injury? How did that affect you seeing things and then kind of figuring how you fit into the flow of everything? Uh, well, the first question about chemistry, I mean, we just got, got, you just got good people around. You got good teammates who are just trying to learn from each other and they work on their games and you can, you just got that mutual respect for somebody who, from Steph all the way down to Damian, um, who hasn't really played a lot, but, <clears throat> every, excuse me, everybody puts in a lot of work. So chemistry keeps building when you just, you got that mutual respect. And as far as on the court and the schemes and the X's and O's and more detailed part of the game, the experience only can help that. Just more reps on the court together, uh, you know, traveling on the road preseason and throughout the season and the playoffs and going through pressure moments and going through losing and winning and, you know, just all the emotions of playing basketball. You go through that together, then the chemistry builds. and. I, I still think we, we, we're always growing and getting better. We're not at where we want to be. Um, but we just, we, you know, we just keep pressing every day, keep getting better. In the time off, when you were off with injury? Oh, yeah. Uh, when, I was, when I was out of, out of the lineup for, those, for that month, it was just all about just getting back healthy as I can and, you know, keeping my time in and touch and all that stuff. And the timing part, you know, only could get better with that is by playing games. But... I tried to, um, you know, work on that while I was out. But as far as just watching the team, just seeing things a little slower, seeing things a little different, and just watching the team just get better and better, you know, get out of the slump that we were in when I first got hurt, and just to see them, you know, see the team just grow and focus on the small detailed things. And our coaching staff emphasized that every single day, and the players just put that to work every day. So. Um, just to see that, uh, you know, made me, made me go even harder in rehab and made me want to come back and just be a part of that. Thank you. Kevin, uh, same area for the next question. Uh, <clears throat> Baxter Holmes with ESPN. Um, one of the things the Warriors have done well for uh, a few years now, especially well, is their ball movement. I was just curious, for going against a team that has that much talent that passes the ball that well, what was it like going up against it? And then what's it like being, in a, being now in that system? Well, uh, going against it, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like your turn, my turn. Let's just, let's just out, out talent the next, the, the, the opposing team. It was, let's just dissect the matchup. Let's see where we can be effective within the offense and have everybody be effective. And, you know, just playing with it, I, you know, being in a system for a year now and, seeing how, how we practice every day and go through shoot arounds is always just about making the correct play, um, putting guys in positions to be successful and use their strengths, and, you know, just having guys off the bench that can do multiple things from, you know, from all skills of the game, from dribbling, passing, shooting, just basketball IQ. You got a lot of guys that can do that on this team. So it might, you know, you might have a guy like Sean who probably hasn't shot a three all season, or uh, you know, but he can shoot the pull up, the mid range, can post up smaller guards, but he can handle the ball, penetrate, pass. So just different types of players. And coach does a great job of putting it together. Uh, but most of the time, we kind of sometimes throughout the year we kind of we get a little lazy. And you've seen it last few games. We're averaging 19, 20 turnovers um, because we move the ball so much and we try to squeeze a backdoor pass in or a lob pass when it's not there and cause turnovers. So we move the ball so well, sometimes we overpass. Um, but that's a good problem to have. Particularly with the passing, how appealing was that style of play to you? Uh, basketball is like a rhythm game. It's a free-flowing game, and you just want to be a – you want to be a part of it. That's what makes it just even more and more fun. Um, guys are moving. You're working together. Uh, 
you're communicating out there on both ends. So it was you, you see it playing against them, and then you see it on TV, and then it's a different feel when you're around it every single day. So um, I'm just trying to do my part and just take in as much as I can, learn every day, work as hard as I can, and um, try to help the team and just listen to my coaches and, and trust that they'll make us better as a, as a group and make me better as an individual. Monty on the right side here. Second Mark row. BC Sports Bay Eric. Kevin, you mentioned Joy a couple of times. Steve always talks about playing with Joy. In your mind, is that something you're used to or is that something you had to adjust to when you got here? And the second part of that is how do you feel it affects team performance mentally and physically, just knowing that that's what the coaches want? Uh, it makes a, it makes it takes the pressure off you a little bit when you're just out there just playing. And But we always talked about it, loose but disciplined. Um, Sometimes we go too far on the side of loose, and then we go, we we come back and we, and we become disciplined and loose. So, uh, for me, it was it's always been like I always had joy playing the game. Don't ever get that wrong. I always love playing the game. I always enjoy coming out there and trying to figure things out. Um, but for the most part it's just a, it's, it's a different feel when it co when it's coming from like your head coach to tell you, tell you to play play with joy you know cuz when you at this level that's something that you really don't have to say you shouldn't have to say but you know having a coach that acknowledges that and and understands that that's the, that is the reason why we started playing this game it makes it a little easier to you know to go out there and just actually do it I know you're a veteran, but do you think that kind of message also he helps the youngsters get used to the NBA? Uh, it's good. It's great for the youngsters, but it's also it also might it it also could be bad for them as well. You could be you know when you come in, this is not normal. As a 18, 19 year old, look at Pat McCall, 20 just turned 21. I mean, you're coming into a situation where you got a lot of veterans, a lot of guys who, uh, you know, been through the two three hour practices in the league before. And now they're on the down the downside of like, you know, knowing their bodies, recovering a little different, going through practices a little different, um, going through just the season a little different. Whereas as a, a young player, um, you might have to put in a little bit more work. You got to pay your dues early on before you can get to where David West is or Andre Iguodala. So, I think our young guys from Pat to to Loon, uh, Kevon Looney and and Damian Jones and all of the young guys, they understand that. And um, they know how hard it is to to get to that level where you're a vet and you'll be able to, you know, be a little more, bit more loose than you would be as a young player. And uh, but it's it's all it's, it's all a part of the experience and the and the growth as a player. Final question to Mike in the back and left. Yeah, Mike Wise, the undefeated. Kevin, um, I was there the night you got hurt in Washington, and I'm guys that actually covered you and known you a little bit. We all kind of looked around, going, "No, not again." <laughs> And I couldn't, can't imagine what you felt like at that moment. And can you walk us through the depths of, you know, your worst worst feeling in that moment and what happened, and and the moment that you found out that you could come back, and and how blessed I guess you are to be here where you are today. Uh, it's a man's game. I mean, guys get injured a lot um, in this sport, and I knew it was a part of it. It sucked that it happened to me, especially at home and a minute into the game, but. I knew that, you know, playing this game, I was at risk of getting injured somewhere at some point. So I just try to look at it that way, uh, not get too discouraged. Um, my teammates and coaching staff and the whole organization was there supporting me through it all. Uh, so and I didn't want to feel sorry for myself either. You know, it's not, it wasn't a pity party at all. As soon as I knew what was going on, I went to work and started rehabbing and. You know, it six weeks flew by, so um, it was it was different than the first time I got injured for sure. Jackie, uh, I'm sorry. thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. We're done.